I have dust in every nook and cranny. Welcome to this month's wrap up of April. What a month. Uh, definitely probably one of the best months of the year for me personally. <laughs> So I just got home so my cats are like wanting to sniff me because I smell like the outdoors. I timestamp everything down below so <laughs> watch whatever you feel like watching. I'm going to start off with my life updates. April was a very busy social month for me. There was Greek Easter so that was a really lovely time to catch up with all of the family and get together and eat some yummy food. So that was an absolute highlight of the entire month. It was also Easter holidays for us down under. So I took my daughters to the Crown Towers, which is like a bit of a swanky hotel um, in the CBD by the Yarra. And we had a really fun time. It was just a one night stay, but we ate ourselves silly and we played some games and won some toys. And um, it, was, it was a nice fun trip, something to change up our routine and a nice experience to remember together. Um, so that was really, really fun. I, less fun <laughs> has been renovating. So I needed to renovate the front entry of my home as the carpet got um, ripped up and I pulled it out underneath were hardwood floors because this is a house built in the 1950s and they tended to do that but the boards were in bad shape because obviously they were just laid under carpet so i grouted them and then my ex-boyfriend sanded them for me because i just i can't I, I sanded a table once and i never want to sand ever again my house is now filled with dust i have dust in every nook and cranny it is ridiculous. I never want to see sawdust ever again. It's still every day I wake up, there's another new coating of sawdust in my house. So I'm like, awesome. He sanded them and I varnished them four times and they came out pretty decent. Look, could we have done another sand and varnish? Yes, but do I want to? No, no, I'm done. I'm absolutely done. I had all of these like lofty ideals of also putting some the floorboards in the other areas of my house because my house is pretty much all carpet except for the kitchen and bathrooms and now the entryway. But after this, this little area, which caused so much havoc, that's a no from me, bro. Maybe down the line in the future, but yeah, this was hard because it also cut off access to our front door and to my bedroom. So I was not sleeping in my bedroom for three days. I thought I could, I can bang this out in one day. No, no, it was three days, um, but it's done. So yay for that. The gutters are still being done. They're about 75% of the way. I, it just one of these things I think too in Australia, it just takes a long time. For like um tradies and that to come out and do the job and finish the job and things always happen there's always oh something unexpected that pops up and extends the time of the job so my dad's going to come and finish it off along with my brother and my ex-partner um because all that's left is to do the fascia and then paint them so they're going to finish that for me thank goodness um, and hopefully that solves the flooding issue and i no longer get any more flooding fingers crossed otherwise if i do it's probably take a look at the roof situation. <laughs> Besides that, autumn is definitely well underway and I love it. It's starting to turn a bit crisp and cool now though. So we're getting into the part of autumn that I don't love as much, but um, it's been beautiful to see all the leaves change colors and uh, to have some still some sunny days. It's been lovely. I've also had an amazing month in terms of energy and just inspiration and motivation. And I feel like it has a lot to do, so I'm just patting this cat down here. <laughs> like, what's she doing? Um, with the new moon solar eclipse in aries i just am um, aries rising sign and i just felt really a rush of energy i haven't had this much energy in a very long time it's always one of those things where i've always wondered why am i not doing more why am i just doing this and it's energy it's all based on energy when i have energy i do things and i get stuff done and i take care of myself better i'm actually cooking myself nourishing meals and i'm being inspired and yeah when you have more spoons to use um it's amazing what you can do but I'm just enjoying the time that I have this energy because I know, you know, if you've ever dealt with chronic illness and conditions and autoimmune and all those sorts of things, energy is not something that you can bank on. It's like you can do sleep well, eat well, exercise, have a good bedtime routine, do all of those things. And it's a roll of the dice. Uh, unfortunately, my lifestyle obviously does affect my autoimmune conditions a fair amount, but not completely. So it's just one of those things. Um, but I'm enjoying the energy whilst I have it. Um, besides that, I actually had a dream experience. If you watch my book channel where I talk about books, but I also vlog about my daily life. I've mentioned it very briefly, but on that night of the new moon eclipse, while I was, I was in the hotel, I finally, I didn't fall asleep until 3 a.m. I was up until 3. 
And then I went to sleep and I had this dream. And in this dream, I was in a meadow with all of these men and women that I didn't know and my bestie, Kate. And these men and women that I didn't know were potential suitors, potential romantic partners. And I just took a look and I said to my friend Kate, you know what, this is too overwhelming. Let's get out of here. I don't want to deal with this. I can't choose. I can't filter. Let's leave. So we went to book it out of there. And then this very energetic woman, I think she was a blonde, came up to me and spun me around and started dancing. And then she said, Chanel, I have a message for you. I don't remember everything in the message, but I remembered these key words and they were Greek, dark, Sirius. I had this white flower necklace on and after she finished telling me the message, the necklace broke. And the second I woke up, I googled, what does a breaking of a necklace mean? And that means you have to let an old love go. But I googled the words um, Greek dark Sirius. Never heard the word Sirius in my life. And it came up with a plant, which is called the Sirius. And that comes from the Greek word meaning torch. And this plant is a night flowering cactus and its English name is Queen of the Night. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, Greek, Queen of the Night, torch uh, and flower, because that's what I've got from the dream. And I'm like, to me, straight away, that brings to mind Persephone. I studied Greek mythology in university and that's why I went there. And I'm like, is Persephone trying to, you know, sort of like communicate with me? Because I've never done any deity work or anything of that kind and I so I rang my mum I'm like look this happened this dream it felt very different I, I have different dreams I'm a, normally a lucid dreamer this dream I had no control over and it felt different and I said look and I googled this word a word I've never heard before in my life and it brought up this plant and everything else and it felt very serendipitous I think do you think Persephone is like trying to contact me she's like yeah most likely um, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll, when I go home, I'll pull some cards and I'll, and I'll check in. So then I went to have a shower at this hotel room. Hadn't been in the, the shower yet. I'm in there and I look at the shampoo and conditioner and bath lotion bottles. The name on them was Golden Pomegranate. And I started laughing hysterically and my kids are like, mom, are you okay in there? And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> your mom's fine. Your mom's just having a moment. And as soon as I finished my shower, I took a picture and I sent it to my mom. I'm like, well, I feel like this is confirmation. Like what are the chances? Because the pomegranate is another symbol associated with Persephone, big time. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna pull some cards. So I went home and during this time of the week, I was working with the Woodland Wardens deck, Herbal Astrology Oracle, and the um, Alchemist's Garden Tarot. So I'm, like, I'm just gonna use these to see, just do a reading, just uh, someone trying to communicate with me. And so I laid them down. The cards that I got, yeah, it's freaked me out. So basically I got um, St. John's Wart, which in this deck is associated with the Sun card and also associated with sort of depression because St. John's Wart's used to treat depression. So it's sort of like you're coming out of rough times and into some joy and positivity. The card I got preceding that was the Eight of Cups because I also asked like, what are you wanting, if you are Persephone, what are you wanting to work with me with? And the Eight of Cups, it said the word upheaval, but the Eight of Cups is signifying letting go, walking away. And I'm like, okay, this is, I've been having trouble um, with my heart in terms of um, letting go of my ex-partner, even though mentally and everything else, um, I've been great. It's just, it's hard to really close the book on that. And like, no possibility of, you know, reconnecting the romance. It's like, no, we are just friends. And that is the the energy that we are best suited for at this point in my life. And I really need to let that romantic chapter go. But I've been having a hard time. So I got the confirmation, I'm going to work with you with, you know, in this Eight of Cups energy and getting you to the sun energy. And it was the other card from the Woodland Wardens that just blew my mind. So... The Wooden Wardens card was keyword upheaval, which was very synchronistic with the Eight of Cups. They're choosing the word upheaval. Upheaval in general is something that Persephone works well with. Transitions, endings, beginnings, that sort of situation is sort of like her forte. But the symbol on the card was Vulture and Asphodel. And if you know Greek mythology, you know Asphodel is pretty much the flower of the underworld. Persephone is the queen. So in the underworld, you have the fields of asphodel or the asphodel meadows, and that is where people who are neither good nor evil go. So if you've been not, if you haven't been bad, but you haven't been that great, that's where you go when you die, the asphodel meadows. And so to see that card, I was like, okay, I didn't even know that card was in that deck. Do you know what I mean? I hadn't, hadn't come up and to have it right there, as confirmation, I'm like, okay, Persephone wants to work with me. And the energy is very strong. Like I've never had this sort of energy before. Like I can tell when she's communicating with me, it's very weird. 
Um, it's something that, yeah, I haven't had experience with before, but you know, a great goddess, Persephone, um, I'm definitely vibing with that immensely. I can understand why perhaps they want to work with me. And if I was to choose, you know, a deity to um, get guidance from, it would be Persephone. Uh, because of just my cultural background and, and everything else, um, I resonate very deeply and I'm like, okay. So um, that was a really wonderful time. I have yet to sit down with Persephone and sort of do a proper reading and that. I'm waiting. I'm getting some things um, like some candles and I've gotten a new plant, uh, another Tradescantia because unfortunately Bluebell ate my other one and if you'll know i named my previous tradescantia persephone that's what i called that plant so i was like all right i'm going to get one persephone another one and dedicate that to persephone because that's what i've called that plant and put some candles and i've got a little golden pomegranate plate um coming and a persephone deck so that i found i am um, and I'm excited um, to have some extra guidance and some extra help and add another person to my spirit team. That's great because right now my spirit team consists of my um, ancestors, especially my late Yaya, Sophia, the angel Sophia, Archangel Michael, and that's it. So Stephanie's just going to join my ragtag team, <laughs> my crew. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited to do that. Yeah, spiritual moment, I guess, for me, one that was completely unexpected and I'm welcoming the help at the moment so it was a yeah a great time and i'll always have a real connection to that deck because of that asphodel card so life-wise that's pretty much it i don't think anything else has really happened but it's been busy like i said it's been real real busy i read a lot of books this month too i read 51 books which i think is the most i've ever read in one month um because i just just <laughs> i had a lot of 24 hour readathons that i did and that's why but i'm going forward i'm actually looking to pair back because it's a bit too much i want more time for other activities but let's go on to my favorite things of the month or my new additions. We'll start with my purchases, one of whom is Lumpy Space Princess. I don't know if you watch Adventure Time, but this is my favorite character on Adventure Time. Oh my glob. I love her. Yeah, I really resonated with this character and I just adored them. So Lumpy Space Princess for my bed because I thought, why not? I'll put it right here. I also got some plants. Like I said, I got the Tradescantia Persephone to replace the previous Persephone. <laughs> and I also got some succulents. So my eldest daughter wanted succulents. So I got some for her. I got some for my youngest daughter and some for myself. And um, we'll see how they go because the cats, anything I plant here, uh, that's where I had Persephone before, they eat and destroy. So I'm, so far they sniff the succulents, not interested in eating them. So I'm thinking they're going to be safe there. And hopefully that's enough light. I'm not sure might have to take them outside sometimes for some sunshine. If, you, if you're a plant uh, witch or whatever and you know your succulents, let me know if that's going to be enough light in that little corner. I also got my, excuse me, uh, Libra Kobo. Upside, I always put this upside down. I don't know why. Um, in white and it's really big. I didn't want to get the Clara because the Clara failed me miserably after only two years. So I got the bigger one, but it is a bit too big. Like I can't um, hold it like that. So I do have to do this. And I don't really use the buttons, I don't like the clicky clicky, but it's okay so far. I haven't had any issues with it. One time it didn't turn on, and I was like, don't do me like this, but it did end up turning on. So hopefully it lasts a lot longer than its predecessor. I also got a new iPad case. It's like a um, marble, lilac marble, and it sits like that um, because the other one just wasn't the right one for me, the cat bookcase one but I've given that to my daughter and she loves it so I also got some buttons so I'll show you from this is from a seller on eBay little nook press and I don't know if these are focusing but I think they're super super cute and check out what they gave me as freebies so they gave me these little fruit earrings they gave me some English breakfast tea and this rose milk I'm guessing you put this in the bath. It looks like salt and rose petals um, bath thing. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot of freebies for two buttons, man. Like, that's amazing. So check them out if you want to buy some resin buttons because I have some beautiful things. I also have some resin uh, bookmarks and uh, painting trays. But lovely, unexpected gifts. Brian's my day. Speaking of buttons, though, I've decided that I'm going to try my hand at making my own because they are quite pricey. And sometimes I don't find the exact button that I want. So I thought, how hard could it be to make resin buttons? 
So I've bought myself some materials and I'm going to try and teach myself a new skill. We'll see how we go with that. It might be wonderful, it might be a disaster, but it's a learning experience and it'll be fun. But yeah, might add another hobby to my list. It's like the year of amassing hobbies. I also purchased a rug for the lounge room. It's like, it was supposed to be a dusty pink. Uh, it's turned out to be a bit more of a mauve, but I ain't mad about it. It's okay. It's not an exact color match, but it feels divine. I am very into this kind of sensory thing. I like fake furs, but really this is like a velvety plush, gorgeous. My daughter and I just did snow angels in it the day it came and I love it. I'm looking forward to, you know, lying down and doing my journaling on the rug and yeah it's been it's been a lovely addition to the lounge room and the cats don't mind it the cats had an issue with some of the other rugs that i had previously but this one no issues i actually quite like it okay so now i'm going to talk about my favorite movies films all that sort of thing so films i watched um puss in boots the last wish I love Puss in Boots, guys. I feel like Puss in Boots is an underrated character. He's amazing. He's voiced by Antonio Banderas. Kitty Softpaws is Selma Hayek, and I've always like shipped those two ever, ever since I saw them. I've forgotten the name of the movie. It's like a classic movie. I'll put a poster here. Ever since I saw them in this movie, I've always like hoped that they would fall in love in real life. But anyways, they're just friends. But the film was fun. It's a fun time. It's a laugh. It's humorous. <laughs> the villain in this is excellent. Uh, I loved it. I love all the Puss in Boots movies, so um, this was no exception. So if you love you some Puss in Boots, uh, I highly recommend. So it was a fun time. For television, I watched, I watched Turn Up Charlie, which has Idris Elba in it. Idris Elba just gets finer and finer the older he gets. <laughs> honestly, honestly, um, damn. But yeah, it was, it was a bit of fun. He just plays like sort of a out of work DJ who's friends with some really successful music producers and things like that. He ends up becoming his best friends and Manny to their daughter and there's shenanigans at play. But yeah, it was it was a fun time. I didn't mind I liked it. and it yeah, it was fine. I didn't love it, but it was entertaining. This is my like craft corner segment. I guessed what food did I make this month? So because of Greek Easter I made quite a bit. I made a apple calvados trifle so this was tasty but there was a lot of custard i have made this once before and in that case i did make the custard from scratch this time around because i was pressed for time i use store-bought custard no no it can't you can't store-bought custard and homemade custard different planets different planets uh wouldn't do the the cheap the quick version of this again if i'm going to make this it's like you have to put the time in and make the custard woman because without it it's just very plain because the sort of spiced apples and the Colvados soaked sponge cake don't have a lot of flavor profile in themselves. They're quite mellow. So if you add some real plain custard that tastes like nothing, um, it's not amazing. So I didn't love it. The best part of it is the Colvados flaked almonds on the top, but I've made it before and it was great. This time around, not so much because I sort of took cut corners, so to speak. I also made a strawberry yogurt cheesecake. And this tastes exactly how it sounds. So if you like strawberry yogurt, then this is the cheesecake for you. I don't love strawberry yogurt. Uh, I bought it just sort of for everyone else, but it's very refreshing. It's very light for a cheesecake and it, it came out perfectly. So it does work. Uh, I'll link, if there's recipes that I can link, I'll link them below, but if some are in recipe books, I can do that. So the other thing that I made was the no churn ice cream. So I've tried a few more of the flavors. Um, this time I tried cookie butter swirl. So this uses Biscoff and if you know what Biscoff is and you know exactly how this tastes. It was amazing. However, I found in this book the amount of toppings that they say is just way too much. It's like, look, I'm all for like lots of, of chunky bits and flavor profiles in ice cream. But when it's all filled with that stuff, it's not, it's like you're not eating ice cream. The, like you can't get the ice cream. It's just... It's, it was this ridiculous amount of biscuits. So I would do less than half. I found with this book, a third. So when, if it tells you, hey, use 20 Reese's Pieces mini butter cups, use a third of that, okay? So don't even half, even less than that. Um, so I did also make the peanut butter cup one, but we didn't love that one, so I'm not gonna include it, but I did like the cookie butter swirl and this surprisingly simple flavor combination of sea salt honey walnuts. So simple and yet it was really delicious. Um, yum, yum, yum. 
I once again use as much salt, honey and walnuts as you think would be right for you. I, I don't ever recommend the amount that they say. It's too much. It's just way too much. But this is just such an easy no churn ice cream recipe. Down below I will write what the main recipe is for the ice cream, like the base. And you just add your toppings to that. Because like I said, I don't want to publish the person's full recipes because it's in a cookbook but I will put the base of the ice cream down below. So that's the base. And then you add your toppings, your flavorings as you wish. Uh, onto my favorite books of the month. I forgot to talk about my books. I read 51 of them, you think I'd remember. Um, my favorite nonfiction was Enchantment by Catherine May. This was part of my Wild Ones book club video. It was very sweet. It's just a reminder to find magic in the mundane, to have the childlike wonder of joy and the simple things in life and connection to nature and just pausing and being in the moment that kind of thing it was it was lovely to read very it was a three and a half stars to me so not amazing but i enjoyed my time with it and my favorite fiction despite reading so many books i only had one that was a four star there was nothing higher than four stars in this month and that was uh, a spindle splintered so this is a modern retelling of Sleeping Beauty with a sapphic spin set in a multiverse. It was fantastic. It gave me Buffy Scooby Gang vibes. The main protagonist is very much someone that you know in your real world. She felt like a real person. She acted like you would think that someone from our world would act if we suddenly found ourselves in the fairy tale of Sleeping Beauty. Um, it was fun. It's a quick short read. I think it's only like 120 pages. So it's just get straight into it. The main character is dealing with a terminal illness though. So that was a very hard thing to read. Uh, she has a life expectancy of 21 and she is just turned 21. So she's sort of making peace with that. This is the year that she's going to pass away. Um, so it is heavy, but it's also fun. It was also humorous and it was a spin on a fairy tale. So I liked it. I probably read more of this author's uh, modern retellings in the future. Now onto the tarot decks. So I have already given all of my reviews of the decks that I've worked with this month. My favorites, I'm going to start with my self-care deck. I'll also do the crochet part now. So this is the bag. I'll put pictures up here too. I got two yarns to sort of combine with this because I wanted them to match. I wanted this bag to match the backs. So. I think I did a pretty good job matching the backs to the bag. So I'm kind of happy in that respect. This is my self-care deck that I made. Those are the backs. I put it on a linen. I've edged mine in multiple colors, just like reds, pinks, and lime greens. I have printed it on a um, linen cardstock. Maybe I'll just do it in the middle. And like, I've got a walkthrough of this. This is just my self-care deck. So I've just got self-care activities on there and I've just chosen pictures that I like um, to to go with them. So it's multicolor. It's a photographic deck though. I did decide to make it all photographs um, as the sort of theme and I've put like women that I like that's FK twigs on the pole right there for strength. <laughs> to um, but yeah, so if you want to look at any of these decks, like they're all on my channel. Um, but that was my self-care deck that I made. And I'm, I'm really, I'm quite happy with the experience. So I think in the future, if there is a deck that I don't like the imagery, I can make my own cards to go with it. So that's been fun. Um, the next deck that I would say was a favorite of this month is the Woodland Wardens. Um, so here's the bag, I'll show you the bag on the left. I love this button. This button is probably my favorite button of the month. It's got actual pressed flowers and grass in it. So I think that is so sweet. Um, so I did make, I've made a lot of stuff this, <laughs> this month. But yeah, this is Wooden Wardens and it's, it was a very surprising deck. Um, it was a deck that I had no inclination myself to purchase. Oops. And then everybody else kept talking about it and I, curiosity got the better of me. And I'm really glad because I think it's fantastic. I'm just trying to find the Asphodel card so I can show you for the Persephone. Um, I had amazing readings with it. It's simple, but it does the job. And here is the asphodel. So yeah, I'm probably going to try and plant some asphodel. I'm definitely planting that queen of the night blooming cactus in my garden because that looks absolutely divine. And supposedly it smells like vanilla when it blooms in the evening. So I'm definitely planting that as well. My favorite yarn that I used was probably, I hate this. I've made this bag way too bloody big. 
I'm going to have to redo it in the future. But this was for the mushroom tarot. So that, that's the yarn. The yarn here was my favorite colorway was uh, by Hedgehog Fibers and it was Brigid. So that's definitely my favorite color yarn. Um, this was my favorite tarot deck. I only had one tarot deck this month. Uh, this was it, so it won by default. But it was, it is great. Um, it's not my dream mushroom deck, but it's definitely my favorite that I have so far. And for a mass market deck, I thought it was really great. So, um, but the favorite, yeah, the favorite color of the yarn that I used this month definitely was this Brigid by Hedgehog Fibers in DK. So it's eight ply. Uh, I guess I should go back. I didn't tell you what these were. Um, so this one here for the self-care deck, which I've got the little red heart for, this one is Let Us Pray Thin Knickers, uh, which is 50% merino, 50% silk, so that's the green. And then the other one is by The Knitting Man, and it's called Licorice All Sorts Tootsie, and it's 80 merino, 20 nylon. So that was that one. The Woodlands Warden one is Malabrigo in four ply, and the color is Primavera, and that's merino wool. My favorite bag that I made overall was this one. So this is for the Kitten Nugget Tarot, and I just feel like I got the colors bang on. And I have to thank my best friend Kate because she found one of the yarns for me. It was in her collection. I couldn't get it anymore. Um, so this one, uh, Hedgehog Crush in four ply. So that's the one that has the blue and the yellow and the red and the pink. And then I just paired it with a plain um, white pink which is called Passioned Flower in Fairy Floss, another four ply merino yarn. I just love it. I think it's cute. And I got a, a pink glittery button on there and I'm just happy with how it worked out. So all of the bags I've shown you have also been in the stitch Suzette or Suzette stitch. So I also made two bags for my friend Rochelle from Amethyst Ascension. I made one a bit more loose and one a bit more snug and she just requested pink and red bags. So for one of them, this one is Melbourne City Dye Works in the color Hot Lover, a four ply merino. And I also combined it with Maximu yarn in Supernova, also in a merino four ply, but this one was a blend of um, merino wool, nylon and cashmere. The second bag that I made was once again, the Maximo Supernova in merino, nylon and cashmere. And this time I combined it with Passion Flower in Fairy Floss, which was a four ply merino. So those are the two bags that I did for Rochelle. And besides those bags, like I said, I pumped out a lot of bags. I also made an, a cat mat for one of the cat trees because I noticed the cats weren't sitting on one part of the tree. And I thought maybe if I had a, you know, crocheted woolen mat, they'd sit there and they did. They did immediately as soon as I did it. So this mat I made with Dying to Knit in Pink Lemonade. And once again, that green Let Us Pray Thin Knickers, which was the silk and merino. And that's what I made that mat with, and they love it. And I did that in Suzette Stitch as well. So that's what I have busted out this month for the crochet part. And I think that's everything. That's everything for this month. I hope that wherever you are, you are having an absolutely gorgeous day. And as always, stay wild, Star Child.